definitely feeling the pressure to have to buy something. You're killing me at 425. 285 cash. Can we do a little bit better? 300. I'll defer to you. Somebody's going to not be happy at this. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Coming Georgia is less than 50 miles outside of Atlanta and exists somewhat in the shadow of its big city neighbor to the south. The Lakewood 400 Flea Market takes place the third weekend of every month. It has space for 500 dealers who set up shop mostly indoors, although some display their wares outside as well. Gonna make money today? Gotta make money oh, today. Yeah. Our pickers know they're in Miller Gaffney country. You brought your carpet bags, I'm sure. A native of nearby South Carolina, Miller thinks she has the edge in this competition. Let's get the show on the road here. Where her manners and her charm will curry favor with dealers. There we go. Who share her southern roots. What happened to ladies first? However, she'd be foolish to underestimate her Yankee competitors. It's shopping first. Because they know southern hospitality will get her only so far in a world where deal making and profits determine what happens, no matter the location. Let's make a deal. I like that. <laughs> Welcome to the sunny south, gentlemen. Wow, nice. Nice. Your turn. The honeybee is the official insect of Georgia because it pollinates more than 50 different crops in the state. Since all of our pickers will need to pollinate Cowan's Auction House in Cincinnati, Ohio, with great items to sell, get ready to act like busy little bees <laughs> and start buzzing around this marketplace. Remember, the honey is in the money. Yeah. <laughs> I like sweet honey. Here are the rules for today's competition. There are three rounds of buying, two rounds at the flea market, and one round at a nearby estate sale. Each picker gets $1,000 for their flea market buys and $300 for the estate sale purchase. Are you ready to shop in the south? Always ready. Okay, you're in my turf. The target item will be chosen by auctioneer Wes Cowan at Cowan's in Cincinnati, Ohio where all of today's items will be sold. Wes is a featured expert on two PBS series, Antiques Roadshow and History Detectives. For your target items, I'd like you to find advertising. Look for signs, country store display items, clocks, anything that advertises a product. But look out, because there are lots of fakes in the market. If I see anything that was made after 1970, though, it's out. Interesting. Advertising. I Advertising. Love that. Advertising. Advertising. Always hot. Always collectible. Absolutely. Always fun. Yeah. Sometimes the rustier the better. Game time will be kept by this banjo clock, which seems like a fitting timepiece for down south, even though this style of clock originated in Massachusetts. Pickers have just one hour to find their target item. Good luck. Starting out there. now. Let's go. Knock them dead. What I love about advertising memorabilia is it shows a lot of nostalgia from the past. Look at this from the Saturday Evening Post. I love it. Advertising is a great category at auction because people have a sentimental attachment to it. I love this. Some bean bread says Americana, says the way things used to be when people actually were slow. Oh, I would kill to have this in my home. <laughs> this is so cool. I love vintage advertising, tin signs, paper. It's fun stuff, advertising. Talk to me about the uh, gargoyle. The nickname was Lollipop. But they call it a lollipop because of the look. Yeah. It's on the original stand. And that's can it go up and down, can't yeah. it? But where could you go price-wise on this? Seven fifty is as low as I go on that. I'd love to get down to the six range. Nah, yeah, I can't do that. I don't... Right up there is a really cool sign. That's, you know, that's something that you're not gonna find a comparable on. And it's an old one. I guarantee that's an old one. That's not a new one. 
99% of the stuff. You can find another one sold. This guy's researched it. He knows what the price should be, and he knows where it's selling at. But you find something like that, that's open to, to judgment of what you actually want to pay for it. And if you put it in front of the right crowd and it looks kind of really cool, that's the type of thing you can make money on right there. I'm looking for something for advertising. I've got some advertising on the wall. Oh, you do? What do you have? I don't know Coca-Cola truck up there. Oh, show me, show me, show me. Tell me about the Coca-Cola clock. That's uh, probably early 60s. Everybody loves Coca-Cola. Yeah, Coca-Cola's always a good seller. OK, but you, you know us before 1970. Yeah. yeah That's the main thing. These guys are going to push back. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's 60. Miller seems determined to stay loyal to one of the most famous brands based in the South. Just now you got me wondering. I know, because they could push back. Yeah. Her northern competitors are finding ads for other southern-born soda brands. Interesting new grape. Not one you see every day. Ooh, Dr. Pepper, that's a good one right there, too. But $400. Now, how, how'd you come up with a price for this of $400? Is that something that you researched? Or? Well, you know, like something I told like you, my husband does his pricing, OK? Right, he does? Yeah. If you're really interested in this, I'll yeah. see just how low you can go. I've got a cell phone, and I can call him. All right, him maybe you should me call. Yeah, call okay, the lifeline. Let's see what let we can call. come up with. Okay. Hey, Terry, I'm looking over here at a Dr. Pepper clock. It's actually made out of a composite in, in material instead of metal because it was and the color is a little lighter than usual the darker green ones you see because that paint was being used a lot in the military too yeah what's your best price on the dr pepper clock uh i do um i do 300 that's about as low as i can go yeah i hear you i hear you. I, I don't know as though i could send that to auction and make money on it though i think that's right about there where, okay. it's, where it should be all right thank you very much what? terry Thank you. The clock is priced on the internet everywhere for 400 bucks, but I think there's a little different piece to that clock there. Most of them are shown in dark green paint, so being that this one is in light green paint might mean a little something to that clock. Maybe we can grind them another 50. That might work. Red Rock Cola's a sack big. That's just one of a kind. I'll tell you something one of a kind about this brand that also hails from Atlanta, Georgia. Red Rock is the only cola baseball legend Babe Ruth ever endorsed. Talk about buying. Since there's a big market for sports memorabilia, I think this could be a hit with collectors at auction, depending on buyer's trivia knowledge and price. Is that all original paint and everything? All original paint. Time frame on it's just right. That's back in the 40s, 50s. 40s. How much are you asking for it? 425. 425. You're killing me at 425. Oh, what could you do on it? 375. I really want to do three. Three and a half. Three. I need three. Three and a quarter. Give me three. Well, why not? Cool. Thank you, man. At a purchase price of $300, a buyer will need to have some deep pockets in order for John to turn a profit. In Babe Ruth baseball terms, I'm not sure if this is a home run or a swing and a miss. Hi there. Is this your stuff? I just don't want to touch it if I'm... Can I just put it down, okay? Yeah. All right, thank you. I love this old biscuit box. The price on the tag is $139, and it's circa 1900 It's got a beautiful amount of age from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Again, I'm selling at Cowan's, but um, it's something to keep in mind. I'm on a very cool holiday sign. Look at this right now. This is actually a porcelain sign. Everybody who rides a Harley has some memorabilia at home. Oh, it definitely speaks to me. This is, I love to ride. It's great shape. I hope it's pre-1970s. This guy will know a little more than I do. Beautiful. And kind of down low, it's probably been missed by people as they walk by. Another little trick, always looking to different places. Eye level, that's where everything's picked. You got a Harley sign down here? Uh -huh. Can you tell me something about it? How old is it? Out of the 60s. Out of the 60s? What do you got for a price on that? 950. 950, huh? I knew it was a good one. 500 cash doesn't do anything for you, does it? 600. I would love to be able to pay 600, but I can't. I have a budget. So I'm going to have to think about how I can actually get you down some on that sign. Great guy, great stuff, but I don't know as though if we send anything to auction from there, we're going to make any money. Maybe we can go there and grind him a little bit on that Holly sign later on. Who knows? It may look as if Kevin is willing to walk away, but that Harley sign has dug its hooks in deep. You see, Kev is a lifelong Harley rider, and he may make the mistake of letting his love for an item get the best of him. Let's go look. 
Looks like Miller is thinking about switching cola brands. Yeah, I'd love some help. Tell me about the RC Cola. The one here is probably around the 50s. This is also a southern brand. Like its more successful competitor, RC Cola also comes from Georgia. They tell a lot of wear. Well, if you were hung around like that for a while, you'd have a couple scratches, too. Come on, Mike. But the thermometer itself is what you want. Is that working? Yes, it is. It, but it's right the there in the lettering. I hate that the, you know, the age came in the graphics, but it still looks good. You still know what it is. Yeah. Okay. okay, so you're going to give me a triple discount because of well, all the damage. Well, we have 155 on it, and I'll go $100. Okay, okay. and a little, a little bit more? Nope, can't do it. We can only go 100 We've seen a lot of cool advertising in here, but unfortunately, the guy who has all this advertising, we're not going to be able to get anything to make money, I don't think. That's what it's all about, finding something to make some money. Priced, everything's priced. Let's go find some bargains. Just what I thought. All decorative items, nothing that's going to help us when it comes to advertising. we got to get out of here. I'll be honest, I'm feeling really strong about that Holly Davidson piece. If I can get that thing for $500, I, I, I don't care if you've seen comps of that for $400. That thing is in mint condition. Kevin has it bad for that Harley Davidson sign, so bad he may violate the cardinal rule for pickers and buy from the heart, not with his mind. He may say he could turn a profit at $500, but don't believe it. He sounds to me like he's trying to talk himself into it. I'm really thinking about the Harley sign, not just because I love Harleys, because I know that it's so highly collected. Somebody or two people at that auction are going to have to have it. We saw that stick together. All right, there you go. Okay, so you gotta help me out here. There you go. They're All tough. Right. They're All brutal. Right. They're brutal. So, okay, what's your best price on the Coca Cola clock? Let's see what's my worst one. 145. I'll do uh, 125. 125? Do you want me to lose? No. Now, you gotta remember, though, we have to buy stuff, too. I wanna win. I wanna win. Do you hear how Miller's southern accent gets a little thicker as she tries to seal the deal with her fellow southerner? OK, I'll do 115 on it. 115? I'm thinking one. See, you got me on air, so you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> OK. Let's fight in Gamecocks. OK, yay! OK, you got a deal, $100. Thank you, Eston. You're welcome. I appreciate it. I love getting a Coca-Cola clock in the state of Georgia. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. OK, I'm just um, curious what your very best price is on this guy. Let's see. I guess I could do 119 Yeah, I was thinking more like 75 Ooh. <laughs> This is only the fourth time Christy Richardson, along with her parents, Lynn and Arthur, have been dealers here at the Lakewood 400. I don't know. That's a pretty, pretty neat piece there. It's got the name on the top. They've been dealing in antiques and collectibles for only a year. I mean, it's in really good shape, too. But Arthur's been collecting antiques as a hobby for over 40 years and started taking Christy to garage sales when she was just three years old. He offered 75. <laughs> well, I said I was thinking 75. Oh. I was thinking 75. <laughs> okay, best we'll do for you is 80. So $75? 75. You told him 80. We just said 75 now. 75. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to do it for $75. Okay. Right. Hope Hold you it. enjoy it. Yes. You let him have it, and I'll take this away. Crack the whip. That makes Bob the third picker to find a target item with only a stressed out Kevin left to go. I want that Harley sign for 500 cash. Talk him into it. That's way more than 500. We got to figure this out quick. I love your booth. I love your advertising. I just don't love the prices. You haven't found anything, have you? No, nah, we're looking oh, for man. something good. Yeah, I wonder if somebody else got all the good stuff. Maybe. <laughs> Kevin is so agitated, he may have lost his focus. Okay, we got minutes, right? We got minutes. And the clock is ticking, which only makes it worse. Oh, what's the Texaco sign? Oh, the Texaco is 8.75. I got good taste. I'm feeling the pressure right now. I'm definitely feeling the pressure to have to buy something. I didn't want to have to do that. Kevin finally decides to play it safe and rules out the Harley sign. Let's keep taking a look. Look at all the advertising we have here. We just got to find a needle in the haystack. He's still without a piece of pre-1970 advertising to send to auction in Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh, this is very cool. That lights up. It's Art Deco, and I don't think you're going to find another one. That one is 470. Does it light up? Oh, yes. Yeah? Can I offer you something on it? Sure. 250 got more money than that in it. Well, talk to me. 
I don't have much time. 325. How about 275? 300, bottom dollar. 285 cash. 300. 290. 295. Oof, 90. big tell right down to five to me. I, 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 I gotta do it. Rock on. Cool, it's in great shape. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin's gonna have to hop to it if he's gonna make it back in time. We got a truck right back to where we're supposed to be. If he doesn't get there, he'll have to pay each of his opponents a $50 penalty. I think we're down here, right? Let's boogie. The pickers are about to assess all the items to determine if they fulfill the target round assignment. Ah, what do we have here? The assignment is pre-1970 advertising. Pickers can reject any item for whatever reason they choose, wrong or right, majority rules. So what do you figure? Who's going to go first? You think we should do ladies first? Always nice. ladies first. Southern Miller. gentlemen. Wow, is Please. this Southern hospitality Absolutely. rubbing off on y'all? I was know. hoping, maybe. <laughs> I have a classic Coca-Cola clock. And it lights up, doesn't it? Yes. I think it's kind of it common looks... myself, though. You better have gotten a really good deal. I wouldn't say it was common. It's kind of common. Yeah, you know, it's a little... She, it's all in that, it's, if she has a good margin on it, that's yeah. fine. If she Always bought it cheap. The best. My only thing is, you know, about the age, if there's a way to tell. Is that pre-70s? Wow, look at the star face I know, here. It's, it's, this was always in the 60s. Look at the type, the way they did the numbers. That's always done in the 60s. Can I see the back? Of course. Is Miller bluffing her way through her defense of this clock? Well, let's see if her opponents behave like real competitors and call her on it, or all let right. chivalry prevail and let her slide. I'm not an authority enough to say whether it's 60s or 70s, so I would actually, looking at the style, like she said, probably let it pass for someone in the yeah. late 60s. Maybe. Yeah, me too, because I'm not an authority on 60s. I mean, right. it's 60s or 70s. Right. Well, I'll defer to you. I say thumbs up. I think it's okay. I just hope yep. you get a great deal on it. See, so we'll give you a thumbs up. Thumbs up on right. it. Who wants to go next? I think Want you should. Go? I'll yeah. go. I'm excited. Can I assist? Don't damage it. Up. Don't. Uh oh. No. All right. What we got here? It's a Penn Vernon window glass, which was used in the Chevys in the 1930s and 40s. Oh, and It's okay. got that classic deco look to it. All right, Milk. There you go. How much more simple does it get than that? It just has a kind of light bulb in the back. Yeah, single light bulb. So. Yeah. And it's going to appeal to any guys or all girls who love a garage filled with kind of the old automobilia type advertising stuff. This appeals to me as somebody who loves Art Deco. I have a fireplace and it has the exact same yeah. strips on it, a glass block. Like, I love this. Did I meet the challenge today? You met the challenge. So I get a thumbs Kevin. up, everybody gives me a Good thumbs luck. up. Good luck. All right. A thumbs up, absolutely. Cool. Thank You've you got it. Cool. Thank you. Coming over your head, Milk. Well, this is me all the way through. It's a sack rack. This hangs over a general store counter. I see it hanging in somebody's kitchen. And if you've got kids in school, you can pull down the bag. Brown bag it. Brown bag it. And it's different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So did I mean it? I'll give you a thumbs up. I do. I, I'll, I'll give you a thumbs up. Go. It's definitely pre-1970s. OK, guys. What do you got, Bob? It's bigger than a bread box. <laughs> Holy moly. I'm that different. Uh, old bread box, early 1900s. Take a look at the signage right here. Oh, With wow. the label inside. Yeah. That's very important. I just think somebody could actually use it, put magazines in it. Oh, yeah. It's a little rough and tumble. Has the bottom been replaced, the wood? You know, I don't think so. Take I don't a look. Think so. It's. Can no, you see no, in there? No, no that's yeah. as bright as rain. So? No, you advertising? No, no, yeah, definitely, advertising, yeah. definitely pre 1970s. Thumbs up. All right. Thanks, Perfect. guys. Yeah, and girls. Girl. Yeah. And girls. And girls. You've seen the banjo clock. Now let's find out more about it. It's a French mantel banjo clock. It was made about 1900. It's a French clock made after an American design. Almost always it's the other way around. The banjo clock design was invented in 1802 and patented by Simon Willard in Boston. We have this clock priced at $3,500. Time for the bonus round. The pickers are on their way to meet Indiana native Sherilyn Cutter who started learning the business when she was just a kid, accompanying her parents to flea markets, antique shows, and auctions. Cheryl Lynn is about to explain the challenge. The winner will receive an extra $100 in spending money. I hope you've been treated really well here. Oh, beautiful. That's Your folks great. are fabulous. Yes. Fabulous. Good. Your challenge today is to tell me where this roll top desk was manufactured. This particular piece as you can see, was probably in the neighborhood of 1880 to 1895, as far as when it was manufactured. 
And we can go in and take a quick look at this? Go right ahead. Hold that. We're going to do this individually, and you're secretly going to tell me. And whoever Indeed. gets the closest or hits the nail right on the head wins $100. Who All wants right. to go first? It's been a lady's first day all day, so Miller, you should go first. Go for it, right, Miller. Miller, if you'd right. step on around here, and gentlemen, right, if you take two paces back, back that way. All right. Boys, can you cover your ears, please? No. Go, Miller. OK, we'll see. All right, who wants to go next? Go for it, Bob. OK. OK. All righty. Thanks. I'll let you know. Right. And who's next? I'll go. All right. I'm going to go with Michigan. OK. OK. All right. And last but not least, John. Hi ho. Part of me wants to say Connecticut, but part of me also wants to say England. So I'm torn between the two. So I'm going to go with my first instinct, which is Connecticut. OK. I'll let you know. Okay. All right, Pickers, would you turn around and come on over back over here to the roll top desk, please? Unfortunately, nobody got it right nail on the head. The ac actual location was in Jasper, Indiana. Oh. It kind of evolved from the cylinder desk, your pedestal desks, that, of course, started over in Europe. Yeah. And so that's what you were thinking. Yeah. Two of you were really close, but the person who was the closest was Bob. Wow! wow. With Cincinnati, Ohio. Thank you. Way to go. Wow. Thank you. Very good, man. So okay. congratulations, and I think that goes to you. Thank you. Thank you. I still think they're great to cover up your laptop. It is great to cover up your laptop. <laughs> exactly. You don't have to look at your mess. Somebody shows up, and you just put it down, and you hide all your whole mess. We are about to start round two, Shop Till You Stop. Pickers can buy one or two items in this round, but no more than that. This time, we have a theme based on Georgia's official state song, Georgia On My Mind. Music by Hoagy Carmichael and lyrics by Stuart Gorell. With his lyric, just an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind as an inspiration. Find an old sweet something that keeps your home on your mind. That leaves it pretty open now. Absolutely. Should be able to find something good. Now you're going to sing a couple bars for us? <laughs> no, you said you wanted to do karaoke. Maybe you can. Yeah, we'll karaoke it afterwards. Let's get shopping. <laughs> Let's get shopping. That's right. Let's start. Let's All right. Woo. Woo. See ya. Right now, with what we have to go look for, something that reminds us of home, feeling a little more relaxed, I think I can definitely find something we can make money on. Being we're buying for Cowans, it's a more sophisticated crowd. Definitely wants nice smalls, porcelains, glass, items that have a value behind them. Smalls refers to decorative objects that are smaller than a bread box. But come to think of it, how big is a bread box? They're mint juleps, Frank Smith from the 1930s. Oh! All right. Now, this is cool. It's a chamber pot. Before you had full-blown indoor plumbing, if you woke up in the night and you had to relieve yourself, this is what you used. Would have had a porcelain pot, and then when you're finished doing what you need to do, you close it. Oh, John, after you used it, you would never turn it over like that in somebody's store. I mean, give us a chance to get out of the way, at least. I have a task to find something that reminds me of home. I grew up in an old home in Brooklyn, and we had these. John, this commode may make you flush with nostalgia, but how many bidders in Cincinnati are going to be moved to buy an antique porta potty? All right, you're asking what, 155 for it? Yes. What can you really do on that? Bottom line? Hmm. 125. I, mean, I need to get under 100. As close to that as I can. 105? That's a $50. That's a yeah, 105, cut. we'll do that. I, I think it's a cool piece. Okay. 105 it is. Cut. All right, thank you. A lot of fun. Uh, I like this Katani charger. This is sold well at Cowan's in the past. Japanese ceramics are rising in prices tremendously. Hi, I like your Katani charger. Do you have any other pieces of Katani? Mm, let me see what, I can, uh, what else I could show you. Tell me about this piece of pottery. This it's is Roseville, Roseville. Uh -huh. dogwood, but it's a, it's a scarce piece because of the handle work. They took it out of production because these were always getting broken in transit, but this one was perfect, and it's just a, a real fun example. That is nice. Yeah. Great condition. It's a very graceful piece. 
Stunning. Well, thank you, Norman. I'll be back. I'll see you in a while. I'll wait right here for you. OK. okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. So I, I bring a few things with me from home. I have a little picture of uh, my brother. Then in the back of my hat, I have a little pin that was my grandmother's, and her favorite book was Jonathan Livingston Seagull. And uh, I think, in short, the motto of Jonathan Livingston Seagull is that if you want to fly higher, go right ahead. I actually have a collection of these. <laughs> so this little guy here is made out of paper mache on top of a uh, stretched camel gut. My grandmother had an actual lamp, like two pieces, a top and a bottom. The top would light up and the bottom would light up. And I loved it. And uh, I inherited the lamp from my grandmother. And now every once in a while when I see a baby, I'll add it to the collection. I have three in a row in my apartment. After hearing him talk about his grandmother from two booths away, the dealer gives the lamp to Bob as a gift. Really? It's yours. Just take it. You know, they talk about Southern hospitality. I've never been here before. Thank you so much. You're That's welcome. really kind of you. Thank you. You're welcome. I do this with my family, and I'm glad you found it. This was his price on it, and uh, I just think that's very sweet. In the middle of the flea market, I saw some really cool walking sticks, all silver ends on them and things like that. I want to go try and find them. I want to try and make a deal with the person on one of them, see if I can. That's definitely something that you'd find in my house, because I kind of collect. That's pretty. Is that rubber come off the bottom, or is that there? You can take it off. I, I'm not sure. That's how I got it. You can see that it actually has the original tip underneath there. This stick right here, it's kind of, you know, used for dress. It would wear it under the arm, walk with it. How you doing, chap? You know, the whole thing. And I know a pretty lot about sticks, and this is a nice quality stick right here. It's having the little birds all with the silver work. The stick is rosewood. Right. A lot of times you see them, they're just in walnut. So if anybody knows anything about sticks, you get a nice rosewood shaft on yeah. sterling with etch work. It's a good thing. It's priced up there at 275 What do you think you could do? That's, yeah. that's not too bad. Um, yeah. I can do two, I do 225 yeah. would be my very best. Yeah. I think that's a little more than I would want to have to pay for it. For I have to bring it to auction, I understand. Okay. If I made you an offer on it, I wouldn't insult you, would I? Uh, you would not insult me. All right, I'm looking like 160. 160. I can do Just that. The, you can do it? I can do that. Awesome, because I'm going to sure. buy it for 160. It's okay. a really nice stick. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Cash, right? Cash. Yeah. All right, cool. A lot of times you find canes at these places. The tops have been put on a different shaft. They call it like Franken-canes. In other words, like put together with all different parts. This is all original. If we put it in a good auction and they know what they're looking at, they're going to pay good money for this cane. All Thank right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. Excellent. You'll definitely find a ton of these around my house. And if these don't remind me of home, nothing will. Kevin just negotiated the price down a full $115, or just over 45%. Here comes Bob, who spotted a Weller copper tone bowl at the same booth. Let's see how his haggling skills measure up. Copper tone was just the name of the line. It's kind of a finish. Yeah, like the Statue of Liberty, which started off copper and had some green vertigris aging on it. So copper tone is sort of the, that's the name that this line was, of Weller. And it's, and it's hand signed. You said three was your asking? What would be like your very best on it? $275. Still a little expensive for me. Right. Is there any way we could do a little bit better? The best I can do is two fifty. Yeah. yeah, and I was going to say two twenty, so I know we're, we're close. You remind me a little bit of my grandmother. She was a very smart business lady. She had great style. Two forty. I was going to say two thirty five. dollars Maybe in the middle of two forty. Two forty. dollars All right, I'm going to take this. Bob was only able to get her down $60, or just 20%, less than half of the discount Kevin got. Maybe telling the dealer she reminded you of your grandmother wasn't a great idea. You remind me a little bit of my grandmother. It may surprise Bob to know that before dealing in antiques, Patricia Campbell was half of a husband and wife acrobatic dance team. We had a little challenge that something that says home right. and this says home. I'm glad it came to you, then. You got a very good deal. Thank you so and much. And you're not a bad businessman, either. <laughs> when the dealer says that, it probably means you could have done better. Yeah. Pleasure. Thank you, Thank you so pleasure. much. John is looking for a follow-up to his commode purchase, and gratefully, we won't be in for any more of his toilet training. <laughs> he ends up at the Richardson booth. What can you tell me about it? We just got it yesterday. It doesn't look like anything much has been done to it, does no. it? No. It's stirred. It's still right. intact. I think possibly the, the tail has been lost. It doesn't feel like real horse hair. Yeah, they changed that. Yeah. Warning, John, if the horse hair isn't original, there may be other parts of this toy that have been reproduced also. Where would you date it? 
I'm thinking probably the 20s to the 30s. 20s, teens that. maybe, yeah, somewhere in there, teens, 20s. Is that a hard price? The best I would do would be two and a quarter. I was trying to get you down to 200. 200? What about, uh, let's do 215. It's rust where it should be rust. Right. It's paint where it should be paint. The leather all seems to be intact. So we said, what, one and a quarter, right? <laughs> Arthur Richardson may be new to selling antiques, but he wasn't born yesterday. I want this guy to work for me. You're hired. 215, right? 215. Thank you. Appreciate it so much. Okay. Yeah. Bob is thinking about making a second purchase and finds dealer James Allen, who sold John and Kevin their target items. He specializes not only in advertising, but in country store antiques. I love the Coca-Cola stuff, since we are in Coke country. You can see the price that I've got on it. 400 down to 275. And this was the kind of thing that was distributed by Coca-Cola, and then people would put yes, their own menus inside of, OK. I think we could get it closer to two. That's really the number I need to hit. Um, two and a quarter. I'll help you out, $200. 200, Two cutting the price in half. Here's the real deal. He's been gracious enough to cut the price in half, but there's issues with the sign. It's missing paint under the G in good. The glass is broken on the side a little bit, and condition is really important at auction. I appreciate you spending more time. You're, you're one of my, like, I have to have a list of a couple to come back to, so. OK. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Quite welcome. Bob may have just offended this dealer by seeming to negotiate to get his best price and then telling him he still needs to think about it. You're done. Done with you. I can't shop with you anymore? No. Well, I'm just trying to make smart decisions. It won't help that Bob goes to another dealer within eye shot to look at a different piece of Coca-Cola advertising. I've never seen any with the actual strap on them before. That's what they use at stadiums. They put them around here and they carried the coats. Wow. And they popped the tops here. Wow. Did you do this to, to reinforce it, this guy? Yeah. What be your best? I can do 250. Okay. I was thinking more like 140. Oh, no. What would be the best that you can do? I know you said 250. It's just that's still Two, a little bit much. 225, the lowest I can go. All right. But I appreciate you working with me. Thank you. Okay. Have a good day. All right. Thank you. Wow. Nice collection over here. I love great smalls. Yeah, they are some great smalls. There's a nice little case right there. This, it's a little card case. Yeah, it is. It's, it's sterling silver. It's sweet. It looks Chinese to me, right? Yeah, it's certainly Pacific Rim. Yeah, yeah. right here. Can you see that mark yeah. right there? It's a Chinese mark right there. It's beautiful. It's got all the lotus on it. It's got birds. You can see mm -hmm. how much that's lifted right off the top surface there. Yeah, excellent work on it. Right. What are you asking for this? I can do 150 for you. 150, that would be the absolute best you could do yeah, on it? Yeah, that would be my best dealer price on that. Right. So my next question is, what's the absolute best you could sell it for? Absolute. Oh, the best I could sell it for would probably be 400, about, right? Well, yeah, 275, yeah, yeah, right, right. yeah but, but 150 uh, uh, 100 allows, bucks ain't going to do it, right? No, uh, it's a piece from the hottest possible market. It is the hardest there is market. Oriental silver. I it's specialize antique. in Chinese and different oh, things. There you so. go. Well, I, I consider the deal done at 150. It is a deal done at one quick. That's sweet. I appreciate it. That's definitely working with a dealer. This stuff is hotter than a firecracker right now. That's just the best. Card fits right in there. Excellent. I'm wicked stoked about the silver piece. If this doesn't have three, four hundred dollars extra left in it at auction, I'll eat it. Put it that way. It's it's unbelievable. I'm stoked at 150. I really am. I'm wicked excited. Hi, Kevin. How you doing? Good. How are you? Are you done shopping? Not yet. No? You want to come in? I'll leave. OK. Dealer Norman Weingarten is a picker magnet, having just collected $150 from Kevin, and now with Miller back in his booth ready to buy. A 47-year-old veteran in the antiques business, Norman specializes in fine art. 175 Oh, thank you, Norman. It reminds me of home with the dogwood trees. I'm trying to decide if I should go with the Kachani charger as well. If I knocked 100 bucks off of this and made it 295 do you think you're safe? Oh, it's going to be too expensive for me. Champagne Especially. taste, but we're on a beer budget right now. Ah. OK. Is this Japanese? It is. Yeah, it's Satsuma. It's okay. nice. I can do this one for you for 100 bucks. Would you take 70 Only back up 10 bucks more on this one. 
How about 80 cubic? What's five dollars to you, Norman? Oh, well, yeah. What is five dollars? Nothing. It's nothing. It's five dollars so, is a lot so to me. Should... It's a lot to me, though. I've got to win this game. I'm going against three tough competitors. I need that five dollars difference. Do you? Yeah, I do. Okay. Thank you. Bob is determined to buy a second item before time runs out, and his heart is set on that Coke luncheonette sign. After the dealer gave Bob his best price, Bob walked away from him. Is there any way for Bob to work his way back into his good graces? I love it. You really not done with me? I'm really not done with you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm under the clock, so I got to grab and run. Great doing business. Great doing business with you. Thank you, sir. Now it's time for house calls, our third and last round of buying, which takes place at an estate sale in nearby Duluth, Georgia. Estate sales are usually held on a first-come, first-served basis for scores of pickers, but our four warriors aren't complaining. They're about to get exclusive first dibs. I'm Robin. And I'm Rochelle. And we're the owners of the Perfect Peace Estate Liquidators. You will have 15 minutes to look around. You will have five minutes to negotiate and buy your item. Are you ready? Let's go get them. The minute we got in there, we just split. Wow. That's awesome. We didn't get in each other's way. We've got coats in the bathroom. Let's go downstairs. Check this out in the light. It's Japanese cloisonne. If I can get it for a right price, even though it might not be the best piece of cloisonne there is in the world, yeah, I think there's a little profit in it, so. Could we do somewhere around 80? 60? How about 75? I'm not, I'm not going to beat you up too bad. 75's a deal. I'll, I'll deal? pay 75 bucks for it. All yeah, right. Thanks. Okay. Okay. This is beautiful. There's a letter in there that she had written. Oh, my to, gosh. Yes. Um, the National like Palace Museum. This person did their due diligence and authenticated it. And they actually lived in Asia for a while, and that's where they purchased it. So it was the real deal. 50, please. You're a nice guy. Thank you. Where can you go on price with this? I was thinking 40. No, we can't do 40. I'll, I'll pick a 32.50. Break of my heart. No. $30. $30. Okay, cool. I think we've got a fair deal. I think we do, All too. Right. What I like is that the majority of temple rubbings from Cambodia, Egypt, wherever, are smaller, only like a third of this. This is the piece I need. This is a beautiful Weller vase. Mm -hmm. Weller's made in Ohio. Mm -hmm. I'm selling in Ohio. I Ooh. think this is perfectly fanning. OK, $200. Let's review what each of our pickers bought and how much they spent. Here are John Bruno's lots. A Red Rock Cola sack rack, a toy horse tricycle, a commode, and a Thai temple rubbing. Bob's lots consist of a steam bakery bread box, a Coca-Cola drive-in menu, a Weller Coppertone bowl, and a Japanese Moriyagi vase. Kevin's lots include a Penn Vernon window glass sign, a Chinese sterling silver card case, a sterling and rosewood walking stick, and a Japanese cloisonne moon vase. Miller's lots are comprised of a Coca-Cola clock, a Roseville dogwood vase, a Satsuma style teapot, and a Weller forest vase. Now it's on to Cincinnati, where all of their items will be sold at Cowan's auctions. Potential bidders are reviewing our pickers' items in addition to hundreds of other lots that will be sold at the same auction. Watching the bidding behind the scenes will be all four of our pickers. But before they do, they each have the option to choose one item to remove from the auction block. The choice is strategic. Do any of them have buyer's remorse when it comes to what they bought and how much they spent? Let's find out. You know, I think I paid a little much for my advertising piece, but it's one of those things that's either going to sell for $500 or it's going to sell for $100, and I'm going to take the shot and see if I can make some money with it. I'm going to let my items fly. How about you? How about you? <laughs> the only piece I think I might pull is the Roseville vase. I think I, I paid a, 
little too much for that, but I know Cowan's has a very strong pottery market. What are you gonna do, Bob? What are you gonna do with your Coke, your driving piece? Ooh. Yay or nay? There's some condition issues with it. Uh. Um, so I think that somebody who's really, really, really serious about Coke might have an issue with it, but somebody who sees it as a decorative thing might spend more than 200 for it. So that's, that's my dilemma. The, the Weller Bowl, I mean, like, it's got a sublime, beautiful look. It's in pristine condition, and I feel great about the bread box. Uh, go ahead. I love the bag holder. Uh, the horse, I think, is a gimme. Uh, there's no problem with the horse there whatsoever. The commode. I don't know. Did you have belly aches when you bought that? Oh, Why? goodness. <laughs> Come on. John Bruno. Sorry, I think that one's going down the drain. I don't know, we'll John. See. You guys are convincing me to keep it now. All right, oh, guys, keep it. I want you to keep it. I'm going to keep it. I want you to keep it. You're all wrong. I'm pulling the Roseville vase. All right, good for it's you. That's it. What are you going to do with your commode? I'm leaving the commode. I'm going to prove you guys wrong. What are you going to do with your Coke piece, your driving menu? I have to listen to my gut, and I'm going to pull it. All right. All right. And I, I think hope we I don't regret it. <laughs> it's auction time. This is what we've been waiting for. Okay, here we go. The Pen Vernon countertop advertising. Neat sign here uh, in neon. 100 here, please. 100 bid 100. Is there a... I'm sorry? 75 I have. 75, now 100. Now one and a quarter. Now one and a quarter. Now one See, there's the one guy in the back. You can tell he rebuilds motors. He knows what he's buying. 150's bid with a gentleman asking 175, closing at 150, asking 175. That's terrible. Whoa. That's definitely wow. not good. This wasn't the right person there. No. Great piece here. Great decorative piece awesome. here. Uh, but I want to make sure everybody knows that this is not an old piece. This is a probably made somewhere in the Pacific trike. But it's still a great piece, great look, great color. There you go. You bought a reproduction. Nah. And uh, let's start the bidding here at $100 if we can. $100 is a bit of 100 One and a quarter, now 150 Bid 100 and a half. 150 is bid on the net. 150 175 Sam. 175 to your bidder. Great Don't look good. Here. 175 150 is oh, bid here. Last call. Sold 161 for $150. Oh, I would have oh, thought that really did that. really well. I would have thought it's the, yeah. it's the age on it. I'm, I'm rejecting this clocking. The oh. assignment was bring things in that are made pre-1970. The earliest record I can find for the production of this clock is 1972, and it's not worth very much. Um, auction records for this clock range from $10 to $25. So oh. I've seen other comps it doesn't fit within my kind of auction. Oh, you've been booted. Man. Wes. Man. <laughs> really? How'd that feel? Let's hop round two is better. Right. Look ashamed. Look More very ashamed. ashamed. While the number of potential bidders at the auction house has been thinning out, there are still interested buyers waiting to bid online. Cola tin sign. Great sign here, and $100 here, here to start. Here 75. 75 and now 100. Now 100, 75 and now $100. Is there $100 to bid? One se or 75 is bid on the net asking 100. 75 is bid asking 100. Try 85 one time. Doesn't look good, John. 75 asking 85. Last call, sold $75. No. They're eating spaghetti this week with no sauce. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> the Weller Copper Tone Center Bowl Nice bowl. Missing its frog, though. Should have a frog that goes with this, and not the Weller frog, but a flower frog. So uh, let's uh, start the bidding here at 100 if we can on the Weller Copper Tone Bowl. $100? Any interest at 100 $50 and start. $50. $50 I have. And now $75. 50's bid. $75 bid $75. Try $60, anyone. $75. $75. $75. Now $100, okay? $100. $125. $125. 125 Reed, I like that better. $125. Asking $125. Bid 100 and a quarter. New bidder, $125. $150 in the back. $150. $125. Standing here, $150. Asking $150. Are you in or out? Done? Sold. $125. Bidder number $194. $194. Um, I didn't know that there was a flower frog that had originally gone yeah. with that bowl. Did you feel yeah. the bowl and could tell that? Oh, no, there was definitely not like a space that something was missing. I would use that bowl just as is. But anyway, oh, lost to... money. The sterling card case, I really like this. Oh, did you just hear that? Wes said, I really like this. 
125. I like that better. 150, 175. Now back to the net. I'm 150 on the floor. I'll take I'm even. 175. 200, okay? I'm up. 175 is bid on the net. 200, new bidder. 200, now two and a quarter. Two and a quarter, bid 225. $225, two is bid, asking two and a quarter. Come on. Are we all through? One more. At 200. Last call at 200 and sold it. $200 uh, to our bidder number. A little bit. 192. Okay. Third. And I would never have thought to go that far. Yeah. yeah. Everybody is just ignoring the stuff. I don't get it. I truly I mean, don't. Ignoring because it's not good I mean, enough. In today's world, it's got to be better. It's got to be better than it was 10 years ago. Forgive me, the, the little case is nice, but it's not worth that money. It's just a little case. Why everything I make money on is not worth the money, and everything oh, you lose not, money on is worth 10 times more? Yeah, it well, make sense. who knows? Right. Who knows? Right. Lot number 248, right, great piece of advertising here. Let's start the bidding here at 50 if we can on this great box. Great wooden box with the lithographed uh, labels. One, uh, $50, is there a bid of 50? Any interest at $50? Any interest at 50? Ooh. Try $20. 20, 30, bid 30, I see you at 20, now $30, bid 30. 20's bid, asking $30. Is there a bid of 30? 20 is a bid, asking 30. Any interest at $20? $20, 20 only is bid, asking 30. Last call. Sold $20, bidder number 169. Man, costs more for a plastic tote. <laughs> right? And a, a big I'm going to come over and smack you down in a minute. It's the market is crazy. Wait. I'm rejecting this Japanese teapot. It's a piece of 20th century Satsuma where it would have had a bunch of little cups with it. It's basically a tourist piece. Ooh. Wow, Miller. <laughs> I understand somebody paid $85 for this. You got hosed. You know, I'm disappointed. I've, I think the Satsuma market's very strong. It is part of a bigger set, though. It yeah, but that doesn't matter. It's Some cutesy, people like but... to buy a piece by yeah, piece. Yeah, I agree. And the Sterling and Rosewood ladies walking stick. Nice uh, English stick here. And uh, how about 150 here to start here? 150. $100 and go. $100, 125, 150 now. 150 with a nice rosewood shaft. 150, 175, 200. 200 now, please. 200, I'll need two from your bidder. Two is bid, 175 is bid here, I'll need 200. All through at 175, asking 200. Last call at 175. Eking a $15 profit. And selling 175 to bidder number 154. It's all about Thank making you. money here, Kev. <laughs> right. Eking a $15 profit. Hey, you made it. E Eking. Wow. You know, when I uh, started in the auction business, uh, the, uh, the auctioneer that I apprenticed with told me never to say anything bad about merchandise. But, folks, I can't say too much good about this. I've got to make an exception. Ooh. This is not. Let's just see what it brings. You're killing the sale. $50, please. $50 for the reworked, rehashed, and redone porta potty, portable potty here. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> Come on. I don't even $25. Enemy. It's $25. Who brings a toilet to auction? Somebody, somebody. We warned you it's going to go down the drain. Mercy bid, five dollars. Any laughing? Thank you, five dollars. How about seven fifty now? You're bidding seven fifty. Oh, you're a good man. Would Guess you have what? pulled it now? <laughs> That's the point. Ten dollars. Look at that, twelve fifty. Joy. Yeah, 12, Joy. 12, Joy. They're loving it too. <laughs> twelve dollars and fifty cents, and are we all through and all done on the wonderful porta potty at twelve dollars and fifty cents? Thank you very much. That's a little hotter. Go ahead. Oh my God. Okay. At this point, we're minus money, not well, doing we're very good. Well, we're, we're, we're all down in the toilet. We're all, right, we're all down in the toilet. For Show sure. me oh, the we money. Go. We make some money somewhere oh anywhere. Oh my gosh. 361, the Weller Forest vase, the Weller Forest vase. And uh, how about $100 here to start? How big was that, Miller? How much? Eight I'll inches. Take it. Now 100. 75 is bid on the net. And how about $100 now? 75 is bid and now 100 yeah, well, for the Weller. An Ohio base, company. Base. Yeah, but it's that stuff is so common. That's the no, problem. No, come on. Now 100. 75 and bid 100. Is there a bit of 100? And now 100. Thank you. 125. 125. Come on, work the room. Work the room. 25. Read all through it. 100 with the gentleman. Another $100. And sold. It's a beautiful oh, base, but the market. Yeah. Thank you. 430. The Thai temple rubbing. The Thai temple rubbing. Any bids on the net there? 
and no bids in the book, let's try $50. Any interested $50? $25. Any interested $25? Wow. <laughs> Somebody gonna give me a mercy bid of $10? There we go, 10, thank you, now 20. $10 is bid, now $20. All through a 10, somebody's gonna not be happy at this. Where is this auction house again? Six Don't blame the auction house. Jeez. 427, the Japanese Moriyagi vase on the stand. Well, that should do well. I'm hoping it had 100, is there a bit of 100? 100 and a quarter now. You got 100 right off the bat. Now 150. 150, is there a bit of 150? 175. Right. 175. You're doing good. 175 and 200. 200. Yeah. Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. Two and a half. Yeah. 250. Whoa. 225. Yeah. 250. 250. 300. 300. Three and a quarter. Wow. Three and a quarter. 375 then. 375. 400 to the net. 375 has been on the net. Four and a quarter. Four, four and a quarter. 475. Wow. 500. 475 has been on the internet. I'll need $500 from anyone else. So we all threw it 475 on the internet. Sweet. So that's a tough. That's good. Wow. Good job. Wow. wow. Good job. 428. The uh, closing name moon that. vase. That's uh, beautiful. Here. How about a hundred dollars in start? It should be a hundred bucks. It's just it's decorative, just though. It's not old. Well, it's you know, fifty dollars. Probably nineteen fifties or something like that, mid twentieth century. No interest. Nobody in 50. cares. Fifty, seventy-five. Now seventy-five. I took her first. Seventy-five. Okay, sir. Seventy-five. Now one hundred, ma'am. Seventy-five has been with the gentleman. I'd like a hundred dollars. I'm with you, sir. At seventy-five. That's I'd a break-even. Like dollars to advance. Seventy-five is bid, asking a hundred. All he thought it was worth a couple hundred. Seventy-five dollars to bid on number one five seven. Thank you. Goose egg. As the only picker who made a profit at auction, the winner is Bob Richter. Unbelievable. Wow, good job, Bob. Thank you. This is my first win, and I beat the champ. And we were neck and neck at the end. Coming out with no profit is not what I like. It's, it's not, not what I'm all about. This was a nail biter, but I have to say that estate sale saved me. Did Bob and Miller make the right move pulling their items? The Coke sign and Roseville vase were auctioned, even though the profits and losses didn't count towards their final scores. Let's see how well they did. The dogwood basket, fairly uh, difficult form to find, and uh, $100 here, please, 100. Any interest at 100 to start? Start the bidding at 50 then, $50 for the Roseville basket, 50, 60, bid 60 now. 60, bid 60, 50 only is bid, asking 60. All it's almost getting to the point where you can buy them as clay pigeons. Oh, come on. 173, nice buy. Like the Coca-Cola display sign in the menu. And how about $100 here, please? 100. 75 here. 75, 100 to the phones. 100, 125, Graydon. 100 is bid with Janet's bidder, asking 125. But we threw it 100 on the phone, 100 asking 125, last call. 100 it is to wow. Janet's Wow, you saved yourself. Wow. 